So Mace, he name dropped a few people in the Oracle too. He name dropped Wolf, Riz, Shine, Craig Mack, and G Duck. So I want to get your point of view on their relationships with Puffy when everything was good and when everything went bad. So I want to start with Wolf because May said in the Oracle 2 that he was the ghost of Wolf. What was the relationship between him and Puffy and when did everything go bad? Well, like you just said, when everything is good, everything is good. But Wolf was a boss. You understand? Wolf just wasn't no security type dude. Wolf had admirations to do things bigger and better. Even when he was with the group Butt Naked with Corey, uh, uh, the guy who's with Puff right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, you know, Corey was re is released now. He had admirations to own a club. He was trying to get this club down in Miami with John Sally's brother, Mike Sally. I think it was 321, 123, 321, something like it was over on Lincoln Avenue. It's where Jennifer Lopez gave Puff his birthday party at. So I think they had a chance to buy it, and Wolf wanted his money. And they was cool, but Wolf wanted to do other things. I think Wolf probably owned 15% of that club with Alex. That's what he had said. It was Visions or something like that. He had owned 15% of that. And he the one who opened the doors to Bad Boy and BMF down at Atlanta. That all came from Wolf. So I guess he wanted to move on and he needed his money, I guess, that he put up or, you know, Wolf said it was 300000 You know, I heard from a couple other people, it was probably a little bit more than that. But Puff, Wolf, I heard him say in the office, I had 300000 man, when I first started messing with you, bro. I had 300000 You understand? And I just want my money. I'm going to stop, and then Puff, Puff said, yo, I'm going to get your money. I'm going to get your money. When I do this universal, I think, a universal deal or something like that, he said, I'm going to get your money. And he said that when I get your money, I'm going to stop fucking with you. And Wolf said, you're going to always fuck with me. And they start, like, wrestling. Wolf, Wolf started roughing them over in the office. I was laughing. I was outside laughing. I said, man, close the door. They closed the door. And uh, I said, yo, Wolf, you got to talk to that nigga for me because Paul trying to cut my days. And you know, I, I'm... I got the contract for Friday, Saturdays, and Sunday. He's Wolf said to me, he said, yo, man, I ain't talking to that nigga about nobody and for nobody until he get my money. That's his exact words. So I was like, yeah, all right, then I'll talk to him. You understand? Know and that's the day that we was in the office and his mom was telling me to go do something and I wouldn't do it. And he barked on her. And when he barked on her, I was like, yo, man, I'm just going to back up off this right here. You know what I'm saying? I was saying that to myself. And then Paul started using somebody else. Cause he brought this other cop dude in there. And I didn't want to, I wasn't even trying to even go there no more and fuck with them. Right. And Wolf, man, go into detail about Wolf getting killed. Because if I'm not mistaken, he got killed by someone that was a part of BMF, right? Somebody he introduced to BMF? Uh, he was in a shootout with a couple of guys from BMF and allegedly the guy he put down with BMF is the one got close enough to kill him. They were at a, a party and it was a young lady that was actually pregnant by Wolf. You know, she was over there with another dude and Wolf probably, Wolf said something to her and she came and knocked his hat off his head and Wolf snatched her up. And then according to a, a couple of guys that was right there said that uh, he snatched her up and then Meats intervened and then security came and put Wolf out. So when security came to put Wolf out, Wolf lamped and waited outside for meets them, him and Riz. And then it was three other cats that was with them across the street. You understand? Looking at the whole shit go down. I'm not going to say their name because I'm not going to implicate them, impl 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 implicate them in anything, but they was watching everything. 
And um, when Meats came out, it was a brief little shootout. And then the dude that Wolf put down with uh, Meats and him, kid that was from Brooklyn, um, he was walking towards Wolf and him. So Wolf and him like, yo, I guess they like, that's my man and everything like that. But damn, now he working for Meats and him. And he shot Wolf and Riz. Yeah, man, that's sad, man. So the same people that Puffy was leaving Wolf for, and the same people that Puffy told Wolf he was leaving him for, it's the same people that ended up killing Wolf. That's wild, man. Well, you know, he told Wolf he didn't need Wolf no more. He said, I don't need you no more. And he said, Meat told him, you know, that he didn't need Wolf no more. And he told Wolf that. And Wolf, it was like putting a battery in Wolf back because Wolf did say this in the office. He said, nigga, them niggas ain't tough as you think you that you that think they are. He ain't tough. Meech ain't like that. He ain't tough as you think. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. So I think it it was a battery put in Wolf back. But then in, in the instance when you are mad and upset, you ain't got your money. And then this chick is acting up or, or, or going crazy over here. One thing led to another. And t testosterone and killed a lot of cats. Right, and another person that made name dropped in the Oracle too was Riz. Who's Riz, man? Let the people yeah. know a little bit about him. Riz? Riz was probably, he was a quiet gentleman type of thing that you didn't want to see him in a dark alley. You understand? He was one of those brothers that he was known for putting in work. But he was a great businessman, had a great business mind. You understand what I'm saying? But he was them cats from one of them cats from the valley that was a straight gangster. Quiet as a, quiet as a church mouse. But you wouldn't want, you wasn't on the other side you ain't want to be on the other side of his barrel. You know what I mean? That's the guy that was in the car with me, Puff, Kenny, and the news reporter. And we ran into Pac and Shug them behind the House of Blues. That's when Puff said, yo, what up, Pac? And Pac looked at him and turned his head and really said, yo, fuck that nigga. Talk to Shug. Shug the boss. You understand? And he had 240 cows in his hand at the time. Yes, sir.